We begin our walk here at the bridge on Avenue Sevilla. It's an easy 45 minute walk. You might wear comfy shoes and maybe a hat. Bring some water, that's always good, and perhaps a camera. So let's start and enjoy the beauty of our trees. Looking to your left, you can't miss the stand of Aleppo pines. Native to the Mediterranean, the bark is orangey red and very thick. The Aleppo was the model for Paul Cezanne's The Big Trees and still grows in his famous garden. It attracts birds and squirrels and is popular as a bonsai. And the Greeks use its resin for retsinia wine. Continuing on your left, you'll see common juniper and yucca trees. And on your right, the water-loving vegetation and birds along our beautiful Alyssa Creek. As you reach the bridge on your left is the Coast Redwood, also called a California Redwood. A member of the Cypress family, they live only on the Pacific coast of North America. Growing to 300 feet or more, living 1,800 years, they are also the tallest tree on Earth. As old as the dinosaurs, the redwood has been around 240 million years. Next, you'll be walking through a small grove of Australian willows. Native to Australia, they are used as shade and fodder trees in agricultural areas. Sheep especially love to graze off the lower branches. Aborigines chew the aromatic leaves for alleviating toothaches. The small white petaled flowers attract insects. Looking ahead on your left is a coast live oak. It's native to California and an evergreen oak that can live more than 150 years. It attracts birds, squirrels, and deer. The oak moth caterpillar subsists entirely on living and falling leaves of this oak. Whereas acorns were a dietary staple for Native American cultures throughout Southern California. Continue walking for a bit to the bald cypress tree on your left. Native to the southern United States, it is the classic tree of the southern swamps, where its roots develop above water shoots or knees for support. The oldest specimen is located in North Carolina, 1,620 years old. In 2012, scuba divers discovered an underwater forest off the coast of Mobile, Alabama, in 60 feet of water. On your right is a view of the Peace Grove, a beautiful place to sit, relax, and enjoy nature, and two of the many famous golden rain trees found there. Not always in bloom, but glorious when they are. They are a native to northern China and produce bright yellow blooms. Known as the village tree, Ross Cartesi, the founder of the village, loved this tree and named his foundation after it. The seeds and leaves can be eaten and the seeds are used as beads in jewelry making. Flanked by the golden rain trees is a monkey puzzle tree. Native of Chile and on its endangered list, it reaches heights of 130 feet. Fossils tell us that this tree lived millions of years ago at the time of the dinosaurs. A comment of, it would puzzle a monkey to climb that, led to the unusual name. As you walk along, you will continue to enjoy views of the beautiful Peace Grove. Next on your right is the group of trees including a southern magnolia and a jacaranda. The southern magnolia is native to the United States. It grows up to 80 feet and its spread can be as wide as 50. It has no serious insect or disease problems, and squirrels, opossums, quail, and turkeys are known to eat the seeds of this beautiful tree. The magnolia blooms in late spring, May and June, and can continue flowering throughout the summer. The large, showy, and very fragrant lemon-scented flowers grow up to 12 inches wide. 
The jacaranda tree is native to South America, but grows worldwide. It is valued for the intense fragrant flower displays of bluish purple blooms in spring and summer. The tree wood is called logwood, used in dyeing and in medicine. Proceed ahead to the stone with the plaque on the right of the path. Look past the plaque to our famous sycamore. Native to America, it has been extensively planted as a shade tree. It can reach up to 130 feet in height and six and a half feet in diameter. Our tree is over 400 years old. Next on the right, look for a tree overhanging the path with huge seed pods, or in season, spectacular sapphire blooms. The Pout and Sapphire Dragon Tree, aka Princess or Empress Tree, is a native of China. It is a symbol of prosperity and wisdom in Chinese mythology. Fast growing and a highly prized source of timber worldwide, a chopstick to a flagpole in three years, they've been featured on the Oprah Show. Ahead on the right, the Shamal Ash, or the Evergreen Ash. Native to Mexico, Indians use this tree for tobacco, pipes, canes, and the roots for medicine. The sap, when warm, helps cure earaches. This tree has been known to cause hay fever and asthma, however. The wood is used for bats, shovel handles, and other tools. Farther on on your left is the Arboretum plaque, behind which is the cork oak. A native of Europe and Africa, it is the primary source of wine bottle stoppers. One tree can cork 4,000 bottles and cork flooring in the core of cricket balls. The evergreen oak tree is one of the few trees able to regenerate its bark, which is then hand harvested. Farther along on the path on your left, you'll see the Chinese elm. Native to Asia, this semi-deciginous tree produces small but perfect flowers in the early autumn. The showy exfoliating bark reveals mottled patterns of gray, green, orange, and brown, adding great textural and visual interest. Wood is used for tool handles, bows, baseball backs, and popular as a bonsai. Before the footbridge, you'll see this tree on the left. It's a peach tree willow. This tree is native to the prairies of Canada and the United States and produces small yellow flowers in the spring. This is the common willow across the northern plains where it is important in protecting river banks from erosion. Now look ahead at the well-known California pepper. Native to Peru, clusters of hundreds of red berries, often sold as red peppercorns, are present year-round. Also known for its strong wood used for saddles and for being home to the pepper tree moth. Sweeping over a person's body with its branches to help cleanse or heal is still practiced in Mexico. Now on to our last tree. The Cook Pine, native to southwestern Pacific and endemic to New Caledonia, it was classified on the second Captain Cook voyage. This tree always leans an average of 8 degrees towards the equator wherever it grows. It's planted in formal gardens due to its unique look. Because of similarities, it's often confused with the Norfolk Island Pine.
want to turn on Avenue Castilla and park in front of Manors 2 or 3 near the corner. You'll begin between these two manors, following the path past the fire hydrant, turning right to the end of the carport where we'll start our walk. Native to the Canary Islands, the Canary Island pine is one of the most fire-resistant conifers in the world. Deep roots make it desirable for longs and long needles trap condensation which drip into the surrounding soil. These pines are a common border along this walking path. As you walk along, notice a bench on your left. Next to it is the Spanish bayonet. Native to southeastern U.S. and Mexico, it produces clusters of trunks with pretty white blooms. Needle-like tips on two-foot leaves make it a good security plant. Native peoples use these branches for basket making, clothing, and footwear. Be careful of close encounters with this formidable yucca. On the right between manners five and six is this tree, a Brazilian pepper. It's native to South America. Its fruit is sold as pink peppercorns, but please don't eat the berries. And contact with the sap can cause skin rash. The tree has a long history of medicinal use by indigenous peoples. It appears in ancient religious artifacts and idols in Chilean history. Recent studies of the fruit show promise for its use as treatment for MRSA. To your left and directly across from Manor 6C is the Dragon Tree, a native to the Canary Islands. When cut, it exudes red sap. The name comes from Greek mythology where Hercules slays a hundred-headed dragon and wherever the blood spilled, dragon trees sprang up. Dragon's blood is often used in traditional Chinese medicine, and supposedly Stradivarius violins were dyed with this substance. Directly across from Manor 9 is the Japanese black pine. Native to Japan, it is the dominant pine along its coast, also an important species used in Japanese architecture for centuries. A popular horticultural tree that resists pollution and salt. Widely used in landscaping and popular for bonsai, it's often called the king of bonsai. Across from Manor 11 and just beyond it is the edible fig. Indigenous to Western Asia and distributed by man throughout the Mediterranean, this tree probably bears the oldest cultivated fruit in the world. Evidence suggests figs were planted outside of caves 10,000 years ago. The fruit is a good source of dietary fiber and many nutritional elements. Missionaries brought the first figs to California and they are often mentioned in mythology and religion. As you pass Manor 11 and on its right, you'll see the Hong Kong orchid tree Discovered in the ruins of an old house on the remote coast of Hong Kong in the 1880s, it is a sterile tree propagated by grafting, cuttings, and air laying. The leaf is shaped like a heart. It's regarded in Hong Kong as the clever leaf, used to make bookmarks in hopes of bringing good luck to studies. The blooms are showy purple-pink blossoms in the fall, winter, and spring. It can reach 40 feet in as little as 10 years. Directly across from Manor 13A are two queen palms. Native to South America, it is a fast-growing feather palm and popular ornamental due to its graceful appearance. Give it sun and it will grow 50 feet or more. Wildlife enjoys its fruits and leaves and flowering stems are used as cattle fodder. Snails and caterpillars like the base of pruned fronds for breeding places. Across from Manor 14G is the ponytail palm. A native of Mexico, this plant has a confused identity. It is actually a succulent, mistakenly called a palm due to its single trunk with leaves at the top. The bottom of the trunk is bulbous and stores water. Slow growing and drought tolerant, one can live hundreds of years and reach 30 feet. It's also called an elephant's foot due to its base shape and gray crackled surface. And 
front of Manor 15 is a Hollywood juniper. Native to Asia, drought tolerant, it is naturally flamboyant, perhaps where the name came from. It twists itself into sculptural forms. It is the most disease and pest resistant of all evergreens. It attracts birds for nesting and its blueberries in the winter, which are good for flavoring olive oil. Brush up against and be rewarded with pine scent. To the left of the juniper is a female ginkgo. Native to China and its national tree, it is the oldest tree on earth, coexisting with the dinosaurs, and more recently it survived Japan's 1945 atom bomb blast. The two-lobed fan-like leaf turns a brilliant gold in the fall. The female ginkgo produces a very smelly fruit, though. This tree has a long history for healing properties, although there is no evidence that it helps memory. In front of Manor 21 are two bottle trees. Native of Australia, it's a hardy evergreen shade tree. Little or no water is required once established. Aborigines could bore a hole in the moisture stored trunk and squeeze out water. Foliage used for livestock during drought, wood used for shields, bark, and fiber. Fiber used for fish nets and twine as well as eaten. Seeds are eaten and made into coffee-like drink for Europeans. A very well-used tree, I'd say. Ahead on the right, the chamel ash, or the evergreen ash. Native to Mexico, Indians use this tree for tobacco, pipes, canes, and the roots for medicine. The sap, when warm, helps cure earaches. This tree has been known to cause hay fever and asthma, however. The wood is used for bats, shovel handles, and other tools. Just past Manor 22 is the Kajibut tree. Native to Australia, it is commonly known as the broadleaf paperbark. We have many of them here in the village. Aborigines use the bark for shields, canoes, and timber. Today, oil is extracted from leaves and twigs and is considered an essential oil used mainly for aromatherapy. Australian trees contain high amounts of anti-infectious properties, making the oil popular with health professionals. As the path turns right, at that corner is a southern magnolia. Native to southeastern United States, this tree has become a southern landscape tradition. Growing to 80 feet, they produce large, showy, and very fragrant lemon-scented white flowers. Fuzzy brown cones follow these blooms, ripening in fall and winter to reveal bright red seeds. Squirrels, opossums, quail, and turkeys are known to eat these seeds. Here in Laguna Woods, a resident found a whole seed pod buried in a porch planter. Squirreled away, perhaps? Across from Manor 384 is the Chinese elm. Native to Asia, this semi-deciginous tree produces small but perfect flowers in early autumn. Its abundant seeds are eaten by birds and the leaves are favored by butterfly larvae. The showy, exfoliating bark adds great textural and visual interest. The wood is used for tool handles, bows, and baseball bats. Highly resistant to insect and disease, it's called one of the toughest and adaptable of all trees. At the corner of Manor 24 is a cook pine. Native to southwestern Pacific, it was classified on the second Captain Cook voyage. They can grow up to 200 feet. This tree always leans an average of 8 degrees towards the equator, wherever it grows. Scientists think that gravity or even the Earth's magnetic field could be playing a role in the constant tilt of this tree. It's planted in parks and formal gardens due to its unique look. Between Manors 383A and 383C is a jacaranda tree. Native to South America and grown worldwide, it is valued for the intense, fragrant flower displays of lavender blue blooms in the late spring and summer. Propagation is by softwood cuttings, grafting, or by seed. No pests are a major concern, and the tree wood is called logwood, used in dyeing and in medicine. 
Hulhauser assured us that jacarandas are very much a part of California's gold. At the corner of 383C is a carrot wood, a native of Australia and popular as a shade tree. A prolific seed producer, its fruit is a favorite of birds and supplies food for many butterfly species. This lovely tree is considered an ecological threat in some places. To begin the Serpentine Walk, park in the lot at the Performing Arts Center, also known as Clubhouse 3. Walk back to the far right-hand corner where you will find this tree. The Camphor Tree Native to Japan and China, this evergreen has black berry-like fruit favored by birds. The wood and leaves are steam distilled for essential oils. These oils are used in baked goods, beverages, and candy, and in Tiger Balm and Vicks Vapor Rub. Camphors are the biggest girth trees in Japan, not found in forests, but in Shinto shrines of small towns. One of these giants promises a year longer of life each time you circle it clockwise. The walk continues across Avenue Sevilla. Please follow the directions on the sign you see to the right. As you follow the path up the hill on the left is the deodor cedar. Native to South Asia and the Middle East, it's worshipped by the Hindus as a divine tree prized for its medicinal purposes and its aromatic woods. From the bark and stem come astringents, incense, and an herbal approach to obesity management. Being durable and rock resistant, it's used for building and landscaping of temples, and it has a lifespan of a thousand years. As you continue walking, notice the tall pines lining both sides of the path. These are Canary Island pines. Native to the Canary Islands of Spain, they're one of the most fire resistant conifers in the world. Also one of the most drought tolerant, its steep roots make it desirable for lawns. Long needles trap condensation that drips down into the soil, eventually replenishing the aquifer. Long lived, this pine grows fast, 24 to 36 inches a year. Walking to Manor 485 at its near corner is the white alder. Native to North America, it is found along rivers and streams. Native Americans made red dye from the bark, which they used for their baskets and for strong teas used in their sweat houses. Spanish for alder is aliso. Explorers moored their ships off the mouth of Aliso Creek, cutting large timbers there, and then during the mission days, these trees were used for construction all gone from the creek now, but it's probable that the white alder is that same species of tree. At the far corner of Manor 485, you'll see the London plane tree. Native to England, its smooth-faced leaves shed rain, removing all trace of London's dust and soot. Important benefits still highly valued today in this widely planted street tree. Seeds are dispersed by wind, shaking the suspended baubles which remain on the tree. Platinous trees are among those susceptible to the shot hole borer with no known treatment. The tree you see here, unlike many in our village, has not been affected as yet. 
Next on the left is Manor 473 and the Crepe Myrtle. Native to China and Korea, this ornamental shade tree provides filtered light and it's also used as a shrub. Often called the Lilac of the South, where they are now widely spread, the species was introduced to Charleston, South Carolina in 1790. Known for colorful, long-lasting flowers, deep purple to white and everything in between, the crepe myrtle is one of our village's most numerous and colorful trees. On the right is Manor 92 and the Fern Pine. Native to Africa, this pine is important as a timber tree where it is harvested for local use and export. The wood is used for building construction and furniture. Deforestation rather than selective logging appears to be a major threat to this species. Mature fleshy seeds are dispersed by the birds and animals that eat them and here in Laguna Woods the birds nest in these trees. The fern pine is common throughout Southern California as an ornamental shade tree. Across from Manor 94 is the stone pine. A native to the Mediterranean region, this tree has been cultivated since prehistoric time for its pine nuts for eating as well as for trade. Today we call them pignoli nuts. Of all pine nuts, this has the highest percentage of protein, 34%. Stone pines are seen lining ancient Roman roads, including the Appian Way. Read the labels on those small potted pines sold during Christmas season, and chances are you will discover a little stone pine. Across from the stone pine is the manna gum. Native to Australia, it was named for the sweet gum that oozes from insect-eaten leaves and damaged bark. The gum was eaten by Aboriginal Australians. The older leaves were laid on bonfires for smoke, believed to reduce fever. The bark was used for shields, flowers were used in magic, and trunk burls were made into drinking vessels. A very busy tree. It's also known as the koala bear tree. At the far end of Manor 95 is the Sweet Bay. A native of the Mediterranean region, this evergreen tree or shrub has thick, waxy, fire-resistant leaves and is pest-resistant. Fresh or dried leaves are used in traditional Mediterranean cooking. The laurel held an important place in classical Greek, Roman, and Biblical cultures. The laurel wreath of Greece was a symbol of highest status, and Rome a symbol of victory and the source of our expression resting on one's laurels. Alongside the sweet bay is the English oak, possibly the best known and loved of British native trees. Druids worshipped under oak groves, and the yule log was traditionally oak. This deciduous, clay-tolerant, and drought-tolerant oak does not produce acorns for 20 to 40 years, which this tree is now doing. Acorns are a valuable food for both mammals and birds. One of the hardiest, most durable timbers on the planet, it takes up to 150 years before the wood is ready for construction. Between manners 78 and 77 is the liquid amber. Native to North and Central America, it's a valuable hardwood forest tree and popular ornamental. It can live for up to 400 years. It displays vibrant colors come autumn and seeds are contained in long-stemmed gumballs fed upon by birds and small mammals. The resin was used to flavor the first pipe of tobacco Montezuma and Cortez shared during Aztec ceremonies. At Manor 82 are two eastern red buds. Native to North America, this small deciduous tree is much loved as an ornamental. It blooms in early spring with showy flowers followed by leaves going from red through green to yellow in the fall. George Washington transplanted forest seedlings into his Mount Vernon garden, and the eastern redbud was second choice for our national tree. The oak won, however. Ahead on the left is a grassy area. The second tree in from the sidewalk is a Brisbane box. 
Native to Australia, it is closely related to the eucalyptus. It's disease and pest resistant and has a high tolerance for smog, drought, and poor drainage, making it a perfect small street tree. It has small white flowers in spring and fruit capsules that do not fall off the tree, looking like light-hearted wood bouquets of fairy boxes on a stem. As you reach Manor 76, you'll see this tree on the left, a Photinia. It's a native of Asia, it's part of the rose family and related to the apple. It has fragrant white flowers and a small apple-shaped fruit used as food by the birds. There are about 40 to 60 species of this tree. Our tree carries the common name Red Robin because of the red color of the new leaves contrasting with the dark evergreen older leaves. A few steps ahead on the right is the flax-leaved paperbark. Native of Australia, where Aborigines inhaled crushed leaves of this tea tree to treat coughs and colds. Today, the essential oil, tea tree oil, is obtained by steam distillation of leaves and terminal branches, yielding a clear to pale yellow oil. Its many medicinal uses, cleansing properties, and pleasant scent allows this oil to be used in everything from home cleaning solutions to skin care. Continue up the hill until the path divides around this huge tree, an Indian laurel fig. Native to Southeast Asia, it's one of the best shade trees, natural sound barrier and provider of privacy when pruned. A single tree can produce 100,000 fruit with over 150 seeds in each, but not without a special pollinating wasp visiting the flower inside the fig. A very symbiotic relationship, I'd say. Adult trees are sometimes removed because of their own invasive roots. We hope you've enjoyed learning about these unique trees found along this walk. The Serpentine is the third in our series of tree walk guides, all of which are available in beautifully printed brochures. The guides may be found at the History Center. Thanks so much for watching.